What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel and in our last video we were talking about objects and in this video we are going to start talking about sealed classes which are one of my favorite things in Kotlin just because as you'll soon see you can represent a lot of different distinct things uh, in a very simple and easy way that's easy to read, easy to understand what's going on, and actually from the Kotlin Lang reference uh, material, they provide an example where you have the seal class called expression, and it allows you to evaluate different expressions. So we're just going to actually use that as a starting point and build off of it because we have a calculator and expressions would fit in perfectly with our calculator. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for our um, calculator, so we have an abstract calculator here. Uh, you know, this is open, whatever. Uh, previous video, if you don't understand why, go ahead and go back and watch it. But we're going to create our seal class as a part of our Calculator. So we can say sealed class and we can say expression. And what this is saying is we're going to have a class called expression. And then you know, up here, we have our add and everything like that. We might add maybe a function called evaluate, which will take an expression and Eh, we can just say doesn't do anything or maybe it, it'll return an int sure why not we will just say return zero for now we'll come back to this but our expression what we want to say is we want to define a couple other things on it so we can say data class and we can say constant and we'll just say val number and it'll be an int and it is a child class of expression. So we have our constant there. And then maybe for another expression, we want to say uh, sum of, and then it'll be uh, val, we'll say expression one, which will take an expression, and then val expression two, which will take an expression, and then this in itself implements expression. Uh, another one we might want to say is maybe like a data class and do, oh man, just like subtract and uh, val expression one, which is an expression val will have expression 2 which is an expression and then just expression then maybe we'll do we'll do one more that's going to be part of our expressions and we'll just say not a number and not a number again implements our expression so now what we can do is within our evaluate. So this is, this is kind of like getting into the power of the sealed class because with the sealed class, we know exactly how many um, classes can implement it because part of one of the rules of a sealed class is you can only implement expression if it is within the same file of the sealed class. So real quick we'll just go over here to our our data types one just as you know an example so we have this one that can be not a number so it can it can be there but we cannot do something like if you remember from our object one with an anonymous class we cannot say object expression it will not it'll not let us it'll say oops so it'll, it'll not let us still say cannot in it. Um, it is private in expression. So 
using visibility modifiers, the sealed class itself is automatically making the constructor of expression private. So only things within the same file can create new instances of expression. That's how you get that um, known quantity. You, you know exactly what can implement an expression. And so at compile time, and actually just like as we're writing this code, we can do something like return when and we're going to do evaluations on the expression. And then it'll say up here, one must be exhaustive, uh, add necessary, and it says is constant, is sum of, is subtract, not a number branches. So you now we can just come here and just autocomplete to say add all of the branches for us. And we have, so when it is an expression constant, do something. When it is sum of, do something. Subtract, same thing, and then not a number, same thing. So in this case, we will just say, so if it's not a number, I don't know, we'll return zero. Or, let's see, you know, there is double not a number to int. Sure, we'll just do that. And then if it is a constant, so if we pass constant into expression, we can simply just return expression dot number because that's all it is. It's just just that constant. And then for our sum of, we would want to return expression dot expression one plus expression dot expression two. And in order to get this evaluate to get this to work we'll want to just call evaluate expression expression one plus evaluate expression expression two and then for our subtract we'll do evaluate again expression dot expression one minus evaluate expression dot expression two. So we have all of this set up. So what what might this look like though? What might we how might we use this? So well one one option might be when we're calling add, could we could we maybe retrofit this? So when we're calling add to add some numbers together, we're gonna get a number here. And so in order to do that, we would just do something like evaluate uh, expression dot sum of which will be an expression dot constant and our constant will be the current value and then expression dot constant dot or constant and then our number so we could do that we could say current value equals that and then hopefully if I did if I did everything correctly hopefully it will work as expected so in previous videos we were seeing that this was coming out to 173 let's see does uh, does it come out to 173 that would be great if this worked the very first time because it's not always the case but so we go ahead, we ran it, and 173 worked the very first time. Um, but you know that's that's not where we have to end things, you know. So because we have our calculator, we can do evaluate, and then because these evaluations take expressions, we could do something I don't know, kind of crazy. Could say maybe expression dot um, let's say we want to take the sum of and that sum of will be I don't know calculator dot expression subtract and then maybe calculator dot expression dot constant one and then the subtraction will be what do we want it to be calculator expression dot 
Mm, let's just say sum of in the calculator dot expression dot constant one calculator dot expression dot constant number two and then so we come down to here so we ha we're subtracting the uh, some number from here but our sum of still needs a second value so come over here and go ahead and say calculator expression dot constant and then maybe 23 and then val what the heck is this and then down here we'll do print extra line this is dun -da -da -da. what the heck is this we run it, we will uh, soon find out this is 21. So what we're able to do, what's kind of neat, is we're able to pass in a bunch of different expressions and say, hey calculator, can you just figure out what the heck this is? We're able to retrofit within our calculator itself to make use of this single function. Outside of it, if we want to call different evaluations to do it, we can do it as well. And we're able to define all of these different expressions in a very type safe way where we know that the only possible way or the only possible uh, options that you have are what is whatever is defined here. So we had not a number, but let's say we want to do have another one that is just data class divisor and then val expression one expression val expression to expression and then it is part of an expression well now when we go to run this let's you know let's imagine that we didn't have this red squiggly line there if we go try and run it we'll get a compiler it'll say when must be exhaustive add necessary is divisor branch so we can do that and just say add our remaining one we do that. We go ahead and run it since we aren't doing anything with a divisor expression. The app works as expected and everything is hunky dory. So um, that's why I really like sealed classes. They allow you to define a base class. So again, our expression and then just define a bunch of subclasses within it and then anything that relies on expression you can do different things with it so um, another popular thing that, that will, I use a bit with um, like Android development is to say have a sealed class and it'll be a result and then with a result like you can either have a data class and say success and then maybe success is just going to be um, a value which is a string and then this will be a result and then you could have a data class and then say error and then val I don't know, just say value again with a string and then result and then from here, you can have this result propagate through a bunch of different classes. And then at the end, you can just say this very simple, I'll just add it here. When, let's say we just have val result, result equals result.success with a string. You know, you say result when it is result dot result dot success. Keeps wanting to autocomplete to Kotlin result, but result dot success do something when it is result dot error do something else. So that's another more practical um, example of of when you may use a sealed class as well, but. Yeah, they're, they're really neat. They are really powerful. Um, I use them a bunch, and that is all for this video.
So if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell just so you get notifications when I create new videos like this. And thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.